السلام عليكم ورحمة الله بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله رب العالمين له الحمد الحسن والثناء الجميل وأشهد أن لا إله إلا الله الملك الحق المبين وأشهد أن محمد رسول الله المبعوث رحمة للعالمين وأن أصدق الحديث كتاب الله تعالى وخير الهدي هدي محمد صلى الله عليه وسلم وشر الأمور محدثاتها وكل محدثة بدعة وكل بدعة ضلالة وكل ضلالة في النار We begin in the name of Allah the most merciful, the bestower of mercy. All praise and glory belongs to Allah, Lord of the worlds. Indeed, Allah is deserving of the very best of thanks and the most beautiful of praises. And we testify that no one is worthy of worship but Allah and Allah alone, without any partners, the true supreme king. And that the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wasallam was indeed his prophet and his servant and his messenger, whom he sent as a mercy to the worlds. Just as we testify the truest of words are the words of Allah, the great glorious Quran. And the best of guidance is the sunnah of our Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wasallam. And the most dangerous of matters are the newly added matters in this religion. For every newly invented matter in this perfect and complete way of life is a leading astray, away from the straight path that only leads to the fire. May Allah azza wa jal protect us and our family. Allahumma ameen. We welcome everybody back to the Prince of Piety lessons from the story of Musa alayhi salam as told by Surah Al-Qasas. And we concluded in the previous episode that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala informed us that he cast love for Musa alayhi salam into the heart of the wife of Fir'aun. So she loved him as a child. And she brought him to Fir'aun and she said, he can be a joy for our eyes. Look how beautiful this child is. Asa an Perhaps he may benefit us. Or at the very least we can take him as a son. Because Fir'aun said, he can benefit you. You can have him as for me. I have no benefit. He refused to accept the advice. She said, or we can take him as a son because of the deficiency of Fir'aun was that he could not have children. He could not have a son. So to make up for that, he appeased his wife by allowing her to keep Musa alayhi salam as some of the historical reports of Banu Israel relate to us. And they have no idea. The wife of Fir'aun had no idea just how much that child would benefit her. And Fir'aun had no idea just how much it would harm him, just how much he should have accepted his wife's advice. But his inferiority complex, him fearing that he wasn't man enough to make his own decisions or that he had a need, he said, no, no, I will not accept her advice. I will not take him as a son. He will not benefit me in any way. And indeed, he didn't benefit him. Rather, he was his doom that was raised under his eyes. And they had no idea. We continue, inshallah, Azza wa to the next verse today, wherein Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said, وَأَصْبَحَ فُؤَادُ أُمِّ مُوسَى فَارِغَةً إِنْ كَادَتْ لَتُبْدِي بِهِ لَوْ لَا أَنْ رَبَطْنَا عَلَى قَلْبِهَا لِتَكُونَ مِنَ الْمُؤْمِنِينَ And the heart of the mother of Moses became empty. And the fu'ad, which is a term for heart here, used in the beginning of the verse, the scholars say is the very depths of the heart meaning deep down inside her, although some time had passed now after the incident of putting him in the river, the depths of her heart were vacant, meaning it was empty of anything else. You can imagine the feeling that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is illustrating for us. You know a parent that loses a child and time passes, they go on with life because they have to, but deep down inside, in the depths of their heart, that pain remains. So they laugh in a crowd of people that are laughing, but deep down inside, right after that laughter, that sour taste returns. They never really return to the way they were. Allah Azza wa Jal says, and the fu'ad, the depths of the heart of the mother of Moses became empty. In kadat latubidi bihi, to the degree that she almost, she was on the verge of disclosing him, saying, this is my son, this is my son. Lawla an rabatuna ala qalbiha, had we not, fastened upon her heart, had we not stabilized it. And the word heart here is the word qalb. So Allah Azza wa Jal 
calls the heart in the beginning, the depths of her heart, a fuad, and later on here Allah Azza Jal calls it a qalb. And the reason for that we will discuss in a minute. But just the context of the verse to begin with, had we not fastened upon her heart, she would have disclosed him. So we fastened upon her heart, لِتَكُونَ مِنَ الْمُؤْمِنِينَ So that she would be one of the believers. What do we learn from this verse? A number of things. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says that her heart became empty. She was devastated. She was, as some would say, emotionally paralyzed. She could not continue. Deep down inside, she was broken, beyond repair, meaning she could not help herself any longer. There was no room in that place in her heart for anything but Musa alayhi salam. And unless Musa alayhi salam would return, she was on the verge of falling apart. But Allah Azza wa Jal fastened her heart. Allah Azza wa Jal is the one that fastens the hearts. As he said subhanahu wa ta'ala in Surah Al-Kahf, وَرَبَطُنَا عَلَىٰ قُلُوبِهِمْ إِذْ قَامُوا فَقَالُوا رَبُّنَا رَبُّ السَّمَاوَاتِ وَالْأَرْضِ لَنَّ دِعُوَ مِن دُونِهِ إِلَاهَا And we fastened upon the hearts of those young men. When they stood and said, Our Lord is the Lord of the heavens and the earth, we will not call upon any other God but Him. The boys in Surah Al-Kahf, it was said about them that they were princes, raised a life of luxury, meaning it was not easy for them to turn their backs on this life. Deep down inside, it was too much of a burden to turn their backs on that life and that royalty and that luxury and to run off and hide in a cold, dark, rough cave. And they would not have been able to do it had not Allah fastened upon their hearts. He gave them the ability to do never in their lives were they prepared to do. Likewise, a mother is never prepared to lose her child, but Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala informs that He is the one that repairs her. And he is the one that when her heart is on the verge of absolute breakage, he can brace her subhanahu wa ta'ala. Of course, on the condition that she is a mother, the likes of Ummi Musa, like the mother of Moses. She was a true believer because Allah Azza wa Jal is the one that grants the believers patience so that they may increase in Iman after the incident, after the tribulation, after the affliction. On the condition that they declare that this is from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala alone. And they turn to Allah and as an opportunity to ask Him, Oh Allah, I can't do it on my own. Oh Allah, help me. Brace me. I'm paralyzed. I cannot go on with life. Help me. This is similar to what happened to the Prophet ﷺ himself and the companions. When Allah said to us in Surah Al-Ahzab that the enemies came from every direction. They came from above and from below. And the sights became blurred, meaning the emotions ran so high, the fears were so intense that they couldn't see straight anymore. The companions, may Allah be pleased with them. And the hearts reached the throats. Imagine the scene. Look at how the beautifully the Quran portrays for you the battle of Al-Ahzab. And the hearts reached the throats means what? Some of the scholars say what this means is they were so afraid that they couldn't breathe anymore. As if their heart, which contained that fear, lock their passageways of oxygen and their visions went blurry Allah says and their hearts reached the throat and whispers began coming to them meaning from shaitan about Allah meaning passing thoughts they were believers they did not doubt Allah but these passing thoughts would come these passing thoughts means that these emotions were on the verge of breaking them were on the verge of breaking them but Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala fastened their hearts because these companions used to know that this cannot come of us. And if we depend on ourselves for our emotional crises, and we must understand that as well, for the emotional crises we experience in our lives, we will fail. But only when we turn to Allah and put our trust in Allah will it happen. And that's why it was authentically reported that the Sahaba, Radwanullahi alayhim, they used to say about this type of state, this type of emotional, psychological trauma, they used to say therein in the times of battle, Wallahi lawlallahu mahtadayna. We swear by Allah, were it not for Allah, we would never have been guided. And we would never have given anything in charity, nor would we have ever prayed a single rak'ah, nevertheless put our lives on the line here in battle. We would never have given anything in charity, nor prayed any prayer. So after we admit that, O oh Allah, then they would say, فَأَنزِلًا سَكِينَةً عَلَيْنَا وَثَبِّتِ الْأَقْدَامَ إِنْ لَاقَيْنَا so send your tranquility upon our hearts and keep our feet firm when we meet, meaning when we confront these enemies here now in battle. So a person, when they come to terms with 
how weak they are and how they cannot go through the difficulties of life without Allah, Allah fastens upon their heart, subhanahu wa ta'ala. When they come to terms that that heart of theirs that is originally weak, that is originally unstable by nature, and they say, Oh Allah, you are the turner of the hearts. Ya muqallib al qulub as the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa said, O turner of the hearts, tabbit qalbi ala deenik. Keep my heart firm upon your deen. That is when they receive the fruit of that. And as we said, the heart by its very nature is unstable. As the poet says, إِنَّمَا سُمِّيَ الْقَلْبُ قَلْبًا لِتَقَلُّبِهِ فَاحْذَرْ عَلَىٰ قَلْبِكَ مِنْ قَلْبٍ وَتَحْوِيلِ Indeed, the qalb, the heart, was called a qalb because it constantly undergoes taqallub. Taqallub means constantly overturning. It's unstable. He says, فَاحْذَرْ عَلَىٰ قَلْبِكَ So be careful about your heart from it going through taqallub and it being transferred over, turning over into a different direction, away from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And that is why the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he said, إن القلب أشد تقلبا من القدر إذا استجمعت غليانا A heart is more unstable, it overturns faster, meaning by its nature, than a kettle when it reaches full boil. You know, when a kettle reaches full boil, how fast the water is turning from under to over, over to under. The heart turns over different directions faster than that. Allah Azza wa Jal says, لولا أن ربطنا على قلبها Had we not fastened upon, he didn't say Fuad, her inner heart, he said Al-Qalb, we fastened apart her Qalb, that unstable heart, we fastened it, because she was a believer. لِتَكُونَ مِنَ الْمُؤْمِنِينَ So that she would be one of the believers. And this teaches us that when a person guts it out, puts his trust in Allah, he tries his best, then that patience of his will increase him in Iman, meaning it will not stay this difficult consistently. لِتَكُونَ مِنَ الْمُؤْمِنِينَ So that she would be of the believers. She was already a believer, but she would be a greater believer after this ordeal. And that's why Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said, فَاصْبِرْ وَمَا صَبْرُكَ إِلَّا بِاللَّهِ So be patient, meaning you have to try. You have to try. Initially, it's your task. وَمَا صَبْرُكَ إِلَّا بِاللَّهِ And your patience that you're going to try is not going to come from anyone but Allah. So you got to pour it out for a short few moments while putting your trust in Allah that He will get you through it. And that will increase you in Iman after the break, inshaAllah, Azza wa Jal. We see what other lessons we can extract from these ayat. Stay with us, Bismillah. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullah. Bismillah. Alhamdulillah. Wa salatu wa salamu ala Rasulillah wa ala alihi wa sahbihi wa man wala huwa ba'd. Welcome back. We begin in the name of Allah. All praise and glory belongs to Allah and may His finest peace and blessings be upon Muhammad, the Messenger of Allah, and his family and his companions and all those loyal to him. Before the break, we said that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala fastened upon the heart of Musa alayhi salam's mother so that she would be one of the believers. And we said that we must understand from this that when a person is going through a distress, a trauma, a crisis of any sort, he is to pour his heart out to be patient and put his trust in Allah and then and only then will they be relieved. They will be one of the greater believers. They will be increased in Iman. And we said that the companions of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam used to do just this. They would say, Oh Allah, if it's not for you, we're finished. Likewise, when they did that, that is when relief came. Because Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala said in that same Surah Al-Ahzab, At that point, the believers had gone through a tribulation and they were shaken to their very core. At that moment, when they chose to be patient and put their trust in Allah, Allah Azza wa Jal says that He showed them the bright side of things, that He compensated them with more Iman to facilitate enduring that experience. He said, وَلَمَّا رَأَى الْمُؤْمِنُونَ الْأَحْزَابَ قَالُوا هَذَا مَا وَعَدَنَا اللَّهُ وَرَسُولُهُ وَصَدَقَ اللَّهُ وَرَسُولُهُ وَمَا زَادَهُمْ إِلَّا إِيمَانًا وَتَسْلِيمًا When the believers saw the confederates, the confederation of tribes, outside of Mecca and Mecca itself and then they had collaborated with those in Medina and they realized they were betrayed by everyone around them they saw the confederations that had riled up against them they said this is what Allah and His Messenger promised us and Allah and His Messenger had spoken the truth and it only increased them in surrender and in Iman and faith so a person when he goes through a difficulty as Ibn Al-Qayyim rahimahullah says he needs to understand that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is not always testing a person with these difficulties just to torment them. 
rather this ibtila, this tribulation, this trial, he does so to raise you, depending on how you react to that test, depending on which direction you go. And also in this incident and in this verse is a consolement to the believers until the end of time, that the believers are reminded that the mother of Moses went through, O oh mothers of Islam, what you are going through with the loss of your children and the oppression that is happening and the blood that is being spilled, we find consolement through the story of the mother of Musa alayhi salam that this is the path of the believers. This is the path to paradise. So put your trust in Allah and ask Allah for strength to get you through it. You will not be able to do it alone, but you can definitely do it when Allah azza wa jal fastens upon your heart the same way he did with the heart of the mother of Musa alayhi salam. Also, what we learn from these ayat Allah Azza wa says her heart became empty of anything but Musa alayhi salam and she almost disclosed him. So we understand and are reminded the danger of not putting our trust in Allah when a crisis hits. That emotions could be when left unbarred, when left without being restrained by the confines of the Quran and the Sunnah could destroy a person. Had she disclosed him, what would have happened? Had her emotions gotten the best of her? And she said, this is my child, please don't. This would have been what her emotions would have, in that case, have covered her logic, have covered her sense, and would have costed Musa alayhi salam his life most likely. She would have lost her child. So a person is to endure the pain so he doesn't fall into what is more painful. The same way that a person accepts the fact, despite hating it, that he must undergo a surgery because he understands that letting go of that advice of the doctors, the surgeons, the physicians to perform the surgery, what comes after it can be far worse. Likewise, the believer is not to ever allow himself come into a state where his emotions supersede the laws of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and his emotions cause him to neglect the instructions of his Lord Azza wa Jal. And of the beautiful examples of that is our Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam as was reported in Sahih Muslim. Abdullah bin Mas'ud radiallahu an says, we went out with the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam and he began to cry and cry with such heat so intensely that everyone around him began to cry. And then he explained to us sallallahu alayhi wa sallam and he said, I asked Allah permission to visit the grave of my mother and he permitted for me to do so. And I asked him permission to seek forgiveness for her and he did not permit for me to do so. So his emotions that existed there did not get him despite how much it hurt to forget that Allah forbid him from doing this and the limit of the concession was visiting the grave of his mother sallallahu alayhi wa alihi wa sallam. Also what we learned from that hadith and Musa alayhi salam's mother in that the pain she went through does not contradict her being a believer, does not contradict her being patient, does not contradict her even being content because you know being content with the qadr of Allah, the decree of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is even higher than being simply patient within holding yourself from expressing discontent, expressing objection to Allah's destiny. Being content is a higher degree. Content and pain don't contradict. When we say a person becomes pleased with the qadr of Allah and content with the qadr of Allah, that does not mean that they don't feel any pain. Rather, they were patient and sought strength with Allah as we said. So Allah begins to show them because of that patience, the sweetness of it all. He begins to show them and remind them. He sees things clearly. This is what Allah and His Messenger promised. The verse says about Al-Ahzab. They begin to see that this is the best thing that could have possibly happened to me. So I know it hurts, but I thank Allah at the same time for such an opportunity to come close to Him. Because some people don't differentiate between the two. Some people at times, just so they can hold on, right? And accept the qadr of Allah, they cancel their emotions. And this is half of an accomplishment. This is kind of a cop-out really. You're really cheating. It was just the qadr of Allah. You don't want to think about it. No, you need to be a merciful human being and at the same time accept the qadr of Allah Azza wa Jal. And that's why when the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam was summoned by his daughter Zainab radiallahu ta'ala anha because her child was dying, he came Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam forward and he sent his condolences and he reassured her regarding that. And he sallallahu alayhi wa when he was witnessing his young child Ibrahim alayhi salam dying, the child of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, and he saw him, yajudu bi nafsih, the hadith says, meaning he's breathing his blast, he's being choked up, this infant, his eyes flowed with tears sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. And they said, oh messenger of Allah, you're the messenger of Allah, meaning how can you cry? This is the qadr of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, this is what they're trying to say. 
So he said to them, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, innaha rahma, this is a mercy that Allah places into the hearts of whomever he wishes, of his slaves. And he said after Ibrahim died, the son of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he said, inna al-ayna la tadma, indeed the eye tears, wa inna al-qalb la yahzan, indeed the heart is grieved by the incident. And we are very troubled by your departure, O Ibrahim. But we don't say anything except what pleases our Lord. We don't say anything except that what pleases Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. You know, Al-Fudayl ibn Iyad, a very beautiful incident, just to re-emphasize the ideal believer with you we should be like in times of trauma, in times of emotional paralysis, in times of these obstacles that at times break us down and shake us to the very core in our lives, whether because of our families or because of ourselves or because of the Muslims in every part of the world, the ideal believer is the one that combines between two qualities. Al-Fudayl ibn Iyad rahimahullah to said about him that when his son Ali, Ali the son of Al-Fudayl had died, Al-Fudayl was seen laughing in the janazah in the funeral procession. So the people said, how can you be laughing when your son is being buried today? He said, I want to show Allah that I am happy with his qadr. I am happy with whatever he decreed. So this incident, as Shaykh al-Islam ibn Taymiyyah said, was problematic for many people. Meaning, how could he laugh when his son has died? Wherein the Prophet وسلم, when his son died, he cried. There is no way that the Iman, the faith of Al-Fudayl ibn Iyad is greater than the faith of the Prophet Shaykh al-Islam ibn Taymiyyah says, because in reality, Al-Fudayl's heart was not big enough even though it's a very impressive thing that he was content, he was able to get himself to that degree. That's impressive in and of itself. Many of us can't even do that. He said, but still, it wasn't big enough to combine between both acts of worship. The act of worship of accepting the qadr of Allah, being content with his decree, and the act of worship of being merciful with the creation. He says, وَلَكِنْ هَدْيُ نَبِيِّنَا صَلَى اللَّهُ عَلَيْهِ وَسَلَّمَ أَكْمَلْ Whereas the guidance of our Prophet Muhammad صَلَى اللَّهُ عَلَيْهِ وَسَلَّمْ is more complete is more complete because he combined between both. He was content with the qadr of Allah and he was merciful with the creation of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. He cried when such an incident took place. So these are of the many lessons we can take from this verse that the mother of Moses, the depths of her heart were empty and she was going to disclose him, which would have been a disaster had we not fastened upon her heart, which is normally unstable, but Allah fastened it so that she may be increased in iman because of that ordeal. And then the next verse goes on to say وَقَالَتْ لِأُخْتِهِ قُصِّيهِ and she said to his sister, the sister of Musa alayhi salam قُصِّيهِ follow him placed him in the river and she was overtaken she told she said go track him down فَبَصُرَتْ بِهِ عَنْ جُنُوبٍ وَهُمْ لَا يَشْعُرُونَ so she kept an eye on him she looked for him and looked after him and she kept an eye on him from a distance from a side, off to a side somewhere and they could not notice her they did not notice her. What do we learn from this ayah? A number of lessons. Perhaps we begin them in this session and continue in the next episode. The very first of them is how the mother of Musa alayhi salam understood that being content with the qadr of Allah and being patient until Allah alleviates a bit of her burdens, this does not mean that she should not do her part. Doing her part is part of being acceptant of Allah as your Lord and Master and putting your trust in Him. How? Insha'Allah Azza wa Jal, we'll explain that further with our, in our next episode. Hope to see you all then. Wa sallallahu ala nabiyyina Muhammad. Wa ala alihi wa sahbihi ajma'een. Wa alhamdulillahi rabbil alameen. He created the universe. To him belong the heavens and the earth. The ever living, he is the first. He's the owner of mercy. He sent his messengers to warn his creatures of the grave dangers of worshiping other than Allah. There is none greater than the Creator.